Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Captain RL with Bottom Fishing 24 7. And today, I want to discuss with you guys like a part two for the Florida Keys patch refishing video that I did yesterday or the day before, whatever it was. And um, it was, I kind of scattered out exactly what needs to be done um, for mostly fishing on the bottom. I touched on yellowtail, but let's get into the details of yellowtail fishing. Especially if you want to catch flag yellowtail, you know, the larger ones. If you want to catch those, this video is for you. So, stand by. Here we go. So, in the last video, we talked about chumming and how we chum off the bow. So, I'm going to use midship for an example. But, uh, say you've got your chum block dropped off the front here on the bow. That's trout. Let's say it's at the bottom and you're in, say you're in 60 feet here because when you're chumming for yellowtail in the Keys, that 60 to 70, even 80, 90 foot is, is magical. So let's say this is the bottom down here. Let's say we got coral, lots of good structure down here on the bottom because on that drop off from 60, 90 feet here that's where the good fishing is uh, for the big yellowtails and you can catch them closer in yes I'm not saying you can't but I'm going to take you to where they are uh, for sure almost every time so what you'll see here is 60 to 90 foot so remember our chum bag's already on the bottom in the front on the bow of the boat there's a chum bag deployed to the bottom at least to 60 feet okay so you've got one deployed there and you've got 20 to 40 ounces of weight in that and uh, it's not interfering back here where we're fishing so midship i said there's a cleat right here okay just on your boat let's let's manufacture us a cleat and let's drop this one down to five feet this is a chum cage okay so there's chum in that, and that chum's going to be doing this. Going to be going slowly down in a knot of knot or knot and a half of current. And that's going to draw in. Okay, I've already drawn this out. So this is the rate the chum will probably flow out of the, of the uh, chum cage to drop a midship. Okay. All right. This is the type of, this is the type of baits and fish it's going to draw in for the most part in the first 45 minutes. You're in 60 to 90. You're going to draw in ballyhoo. It's probably going to be some pilchards, especially if it's, you know, if it's cloudy or it's dark. Uh, the yellowtail are going to start coming in. And you'll have some tropicals that you really can't identify, blue and yellow, you know, fish. All, all kinds of tropicals come up in this jump. So, you'll all this will start happening. You'll see fish flashing all out in here behind your boat. You're going to see fish. Uh, mainly, you'll see ballyhoo. Okay. Um. Every now and then, you'll see a small yellowtail come up into this. And so, we automatically, oh, there's the yellowtail. So, we automatically, we want to start fishing right behind the boat. So, we take these jig heads that are made for yellowtail fishing. They sell them all over the Keys, are available anywhere. Any type of store in the Keys sells them. They're eighth ounce, quarter ounce jigs. Um, they're made for putting a, a small shrimp or any type of cup made a piece of silver side, um, you know, glass minnow on there. And drifting it back with the rate of your chum. It needs to flow back with the rate your chum's flowing so it looks more natural because there's nothing natural about that part of it. So we want it as light as possible, possibly weightless, number one. Possibly weightless, depending on the tide and depending on what, what kind of bait you have and how it's sinking and if they want it. So that could be a live shrimp with or without a jig head, okay? You're going to make a decision on the jig head weights. If you decide to do that based on what bait you're using and how the current's running, because you don't want it to sink straight down. If you're fishing for yellowtails, you don't want to be on the bottom. You need to be in the column, preferably toward the top. Okay, so when you do it, whatever bait you use, you're just going to have to watch and float back. You're going to open bail a spinning reel, like a 2,500 or 3,000 spinning reel, okay? Doesn't matter what brand, whatever you like on a, on a light to medium rod. So you let that go back into the current, back into the chum. You're seeing ballyhoo, tropicals, 
probably seen a couple yellowtail here and there behind the motor that are small. Might be a medium one. Hardly ever do you see big ones at the starter um, until later into your chummy chain. So, so you figure out what you want to fish for bait and let it flip back. You're going to fish all, all your baits, actually. Pieces of cup bait, pieces of shrimp, live brown shrimp, as we discussed. You're going to fish all that. Okay? So, let it flip back. <clears throat> so, let's say, let's say this is, uh, let's just go do an estimate here. Let's say we're seeing all these fish. At 15 yards behind the boat. This is just an estimate. So you're seeing all this stuff happen at around 15 yards behind the boat. So that's generally where this is generally that 15 yards, 20 yards, that's that's as far back as anybody fishes. And those people usually don't catch might you might catch legal yellowtail snapper. But where's the big ones? Right? Check this out. So your bigger yellowtail. So I'm going to put here small yellow tail. So right in here, it's going to be all the small yellow tail. Okay, we need to get our focus out of this area because there's so much to look at. There's so much to see, and you're just like, "Wow, there's got to be something here. There's got to be big yellow tails in here." You just because you, you get you get wound up with that 15, 20 yard area, because you can see that far without the glare um, is bad. The further back it is, the, the less glare, I mean, the less uh, vision you have, field of vision you have, because the glare is worse. Right around the boat, you'll see everything. So we need to focus our attention where our baits are going back here in this area, which will be 30 yards plus. This is where you want to be looking, um, or not? Well, you can't see there. All you'll see is clear. But this is where your big yellowtail are at. So, fifteen yards, twenty yards, small yellowtail back here where you can't see and you're not thinking about. Is where your big yellowtail are. So when you so when you when you toss out, you throw your bait out of the back of the boat, whatever it may be, go past that first fifteen yard spectrum. Toss it out past that if you can. Um, you should be you know fishing a light enough line like a fifteen pound braid um, with a twenty you know twenty pound fluorocarbon, fifteen pound fluorocarbon leader on there, about ten foot long. So you want to be able to pat cast whatever bait you use, where it be again a live shrimp. Uh, a cut silver side or a whole silver side, whatever it may be, once you figure out the, the, the rate that it sinks, that's what you have to do first. Once you figure that out, we want it sinking normally. So we want to throw just past that 15 yard mark, open the bail up. Because if you don't, first, if, if you don't throw past that 15 yard mark, what's going to happen? Small fish are going to get the bait. So, and it'll still happen even further back, too. I'm not saying it won't, but I'm telling you, it will for sure within that 15 yard radius behind the motors that you're most people are magnified in on going, wow man look at all that bait look at all those fish you got to get out of that mentality you got to throw past that those yellow tails that are big they're further back they're smart they can see and if they got big eyes if they can see you and you can see them that's not good eye contact with big yellow tails is rare you know you, i mean you just don't you don't usually see them. So if you can see them, they can see you type deal. Bad. Bad news. So, and you won't see these most of the time. Not the big ones, not until they're on the hook at the boat, but you've reeled in from 30, 40 yards back or more. Um, that's where they're living at. So let that bait drift back like we, like we see here. I know, I hope all this makes sense to you because this is, this is how, this is how it works. You got to get those baits back, back here. Because it's going to get it's going to get annihilated by smaller fish in here of all types. So cast it right in here, open the bail up, and let it drift back. I'm a big proponent of no weight at all. Those yellowtails, if they know you can't see them, they're going to be at the top, pretty close to the top. And uh, sometimes they're down, which is why they make those jig weights. But I'm going to try focusing on the surface first. If nothing happens, or I get you know. 
hit by tropicals and other fish I don't want, sailor's choice, but whatever it may be, trash fish that we don't want, I'm going to then put a weight on it to get below them. And that's when we'll go to an eighth ounce and we'll send a live shrimp back or a piece of a shrimp, either way, because honestly, once you get these big yellowtails feeding, it don't matter, they'll eat anything. Okay? That's a fact. They'll eat anything once you get them going. So this isn't even going to happen for 45 minutes or so. So don't expect just to start chumming and throw back to 30, 40 yards back there and start letting your bail open up and letting your bait drift back with the chum. Don't think it's going to happen immediately. It, it, just, it just don't. Another thing is stay away from people. You just get out to where it drops off the patch in the deeper water. You can visually see it. Like Again, I suggest flfishingspots.com for these spots. If you don't know much about this, but you can visually look over the side of the boat when the water's decently clear in the keys. And it goes from, you can see all the greens and all the beauty of the reef and the coral heads, potato, the potato corals and the fan coral. You can see all this stuff up to 40, 50 feet pretty good. Get to 60 and 70, it starts disappearing. And at 90, it's just dark blue. You know, that beautiful cobalt blue that it is. Um, and just right there is, is where they're at. You know why they like that depth? Because you can't see them. That's why they like that depth, the bigger yellowtail. You know, it's a good place to bottom fish to. It is. Although you can catch the groupers and muttons in shallower, um, just the same. Use it a bigger mutton drought in that deeper water. But you can catch good fish in, like I said, 15 to 30 feet up on the patch. But we're talking about fishing the ledge again where it drops off. That's where your big yellowtails are going to be. And getting out of that 15-yard radius right behind the boat, that's the key to it. And um, we'll look at this one more time. 15 yards, up to 15 yards behind the motors. Going to be some fish in there. It might be a keeper yellowtail, possibly a keeper yellowtail in here. And again, you're going to see valley hue pilchards. You're going to see a few yellowtail probably. Tropical fish and some other identified stuff. Lots of ballyhoo though. And um, I'll go ahead and ballyhoo my, you know, a few a, a few ballyhoo. I'll get, I'll get, you know, 30 or 40 ballyhoo in, in my live wheel. And I'll uh, start messing around with those. Let some time go by. So I'd say the time, 45 minutes of chumming. So 45 minutes of chumming, then I'm going to yellowtail fish. I'm going to let 45 minutes go by before I start actually really seriously fishing for bigger yellowtail. And again, back in that 30 to 50 yards, way back. So you can start a little closer than that and just let it free flow back. Like again, you got to figure out the depth they're at, which again is why they make those jigs and they're weighted from like a 16 up to a half ounce, something like that. You can use those jigs or you can just put a split shot on your line and have a drape. So you put a split shot here and your hook goes here. Then we got to use a circle hook too. But you can't have a drape in the line, which I like to do. I like to put a split shot about four feet from my hook. And um, it just makes the bait act different. I, I just like it. You can use the jigs or you can you can knock a rig and, and take your split shot weight or whatever weight you have it and put it right down on top of the, the, the shank of the hook if you want. That's up to you. But if those big fish aren't on top, we got to sink it a little bit and then figure out how far to sink it, how far to let it go back. But you'll start getting into them eventually. All of a sudden, you know, your bells, you got your bell up and the line's just kind of easing out with the tide. It'll start pouring off of there. Flip the bell closed, lift the rod. You got it. Fish on. So, anyways, I hope this illustration helped you guys. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Y'all take care. Be safe on the water. This is Captain RL, Bottom Fish 24-7. I'm out. See y'all later. Be safe on the water. Take care.